I'm Ellen, and this is my walkaway testimonial. We have a choice. We can choose to be victims and give the radical left power over us and let them destroy our country, or we can choose to be self-empowered, like the brave patriots who founded our great country. The fact is we are all free, independent, exceptional beings. We are each uniquely valuable. We have the capacity flowing from our God-given rights for well-being and prosperity. We each have the right to define who we are and what we want and to express ourselves freely. This is our true nature. We have the right to use our unique talents strengths and preferences to succeed, to experience favorable and desired outcomes. In fact, this is our purpose. When we recognize and embrace our true nature and purpose, we are self-empowered. When we are self-empowered, we succeed. And if by chance we encounter obstacles along the way, we can pivot to a better position by refocusing on our true nature and true purpose. These are the principles upon which our great nation was founded. The brave patriots who fought the Revolutionary War and framed our Constitution did not allow themselves to be victims of a tyrannical king. Instead, they pivoted back to connection with their true nature and their true purpose. They banded together, empowering themselves and boldly declaring, we, the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to posterity. These are the principles I've always believed in as a conservative and patriotic woman, wife, mother, daughter, and businesswoman. I was born to an unwed teenaged mother and was adopted as an infant by parents who were 45 and 50 during my first year of life. I learned from my parents that anything is possible. They always told me, you can be anything you want to be, just be a good one. My parents grew up in working class poor families. Their grandparents and great grandparents immigrated legally from Ireland and Germany to the United States for a better life. Mom and Dad were young when the Great Depression hit. Dad was drafted to fight in World War II in the early days of their marriage. They struggled for 25 years to have biological children and ultimately adopted. My parents never let the conditions around them get in the way. They survived and thrived to create the loving family they always wanted. They were proud Americans, worked hard, were respected in the community, and were able to provide their children with a better life than they had. In short, they lived the American dream. That dream appears to be dying today, or is at the very least on life support. My husband and I worry about the America our sons will inherit. The wokeness that dominates the majority of our corporate, educational, and governmental institutions is sucking the life out of the American dream. Wokeness and the woke agenda are the antithesis of what America is all about. Wokeness perpetuates victimhood. The woke mindset is one of lack, negativity, and disparity. The woke agenda rejects equality as myth, instead promoting equity, or the socialist Marxist concepts of collectivism and redistribution to remedy social injustice theories. In wokeness, you feel you've been victimized or wronged. Because, as, because others have what you don't, or others believe differently than you do, and you demand equity, the redistribution of wealth and opportunity, and the censorship of nonconforming ideas to rectify the, the perceived disparity. The woke mindset thinks you can only succeed if others are punished for their privilege or canceled for their beliefs that are not in line with collectivism and redistribution. Wokeness is about dependency, not independence and freedom. The woke agenda is one of conformity not inclusiveness and tolerance. In the woke, corporate, educational, and governmental world, free speech is squelched and conservatives are expected to hide their beliefs or be canceled. If you want to succeed these days, you have to swallow the woke agenda. It shouldn't be that way. 
Not so long ago, it was easier to be a conservative in corporate America. You could work alongside liberals and have cordial, respectful discussions about your different views and then go enjoy a cordial lunch or drinks after work. Those days are gone now. As the years passed, sadly, I learned to keep my conservative political views to myself in the workplace. Being my authentic self carried the real risk of harm to my career. For years, I kept silent, letting people assume that just because I was an educated woman from New York, I was a liberal. Why did it matter that I couldn't express myself freely at work as long as I was getting ahead? I could always go home and complain to my family and friends about how angry and resentful I was that I had to hide my true beliefs from my colleagues and company. That made me feel better, right? But it didn't, because although I didn't realize it at the time, I was sabotaging myself. I allowed the woke corporate world to interfere with my connection to my true nature. I felt trapped, tired, and stressed, and I compensated by reveling in my victimhood, my personal relationships, and health were suffering from my constant complaining and focus on negativity. I was swallowing the woke and choking. Finally, one day, I had enough. I had just started a new job. It was during the time that Trump derangement syndrome had taken hold. A woman at work who really didn't know me was complaining to our coworkers about how bad Trump was. Out of the blue, she turned to me and asked, Ellen, aren't you glad you voted for Hillary? The question bothered me a lot. I was angry that she just assumed because I was a woman that I voted for Hillary. I decided that I didn't want to choke to get ahead anymore. I finally found my authentic voice again and responded, no, I did not. As realization dawned on her that I voted for President Trump, her mouth fell open in shock and horror. She was so traumatized that a couple of weeks later during a business lunch, she leaned close over the table and asked wide-eyed, Ellen, do you regret your choice? I answered confidently, not at all. I'm even going to do it again. She just stared. It was incomprehensible to her that a woman could vote that way and that a woman did not share the liberal agenda. On another occasion more recently, after Roe was struck down, a female colleague posted in a professional women's social media group soliciting colleagues with an offer to match funds in support of a reproductive rights organization. I thought long and hard about it, knowing that I was going to be taking a risk by posting, but I replied to the post in gratitude that my birth mother chose to put me up for adoption rather than aborting me. My point was and is that there are alternatives to abortion. Of course, my reply was not well received, but I'm glad I finally found the courage to be my authentic conservative self. And now I've walked away entirely from the woke corporate world. I'm focused on helping other conservative and patriotic women succeed. So I'm a walk with and a walk away. I stand with those who are proud to be American and embrace American exceptionalism and ingenuity. I stand with those who believe in the Constitution and our constitutional republic. I stand with those who believe in free speech, free market capitalism, entrepreneurship, rugged individualism, and limited government. I stand with those who respect the American flag. I stand with those who appreciate God's bounty, equality, and freedom. I stand with those who share a conviction that justice should be blind, particularly in this age where women are being erased by the radical LGBTQIA plus agenda. I stand with those who celebrate the distinct characteristics that make women women and men men. And I stand with those who support our military and first responders. I'm thrilled to be part of this movement. I'm inspired by Brandon, his team, and all of you. I have a call to action for the other women of Walkaway. Let's help the Republicans do a better job with the abortion issue. It was a big factor in the 2022 election. Personally, I believe that late-term abortion should be banned and that 15-week bans are reasonable, but six-week bans go too far. There should be exceptions for rape and incest, too. I also think we need to better educate our youth and society in general about practicing birth control so there are less unwanted pregnancies in the first place, and about adoption as an alternative. Thanks for the opportunity to post this testimonial. Let's all keep doing our best to keep the American dream and our constitutional republic alive. 
For more great videos, download the Walkaway Social app at walkawaysocial.com. Share your testimonial and join our community.